Canine Hoopers is a fun, fast, low impact sport similar to dog agility but comprising of hoops, tunnels, barrels and the tango mat. It's aimed to be inclusive for all breeds of dogs with tunnels being taller and wider than those found in agility. The courses are free flowing and lack weaves, tight turns or anything that may harm a dog's joints. It's an ideal foundation sport for agility dogs to learn distance handling although if you're fit enough you can still run with your dog. In this video I take you from exercises involving one hoop to sequences that enable you to complete simple courses with little help from the handler. Yay! Hello and welcome to our video about how to teach your dog to do canine hoopers. I'm Rachel, this is Amadeus, a four year old Siberian Husky, Bohemia, a 20 month old Siberian Husky and Disney, a working Cocker Spaniel. <laughs> Sorry, I'm a little bit best going on here. Before we begin, um, you're going to need some hoops. I can't find mine because we've buried them. Like this one. You can buy them on Amazon or eBay for around £15 or you can make your own out of waste pipe, which is what I've done. And the hoops just slide in and out and it's very easy to transport them. Alternatively, you could just put the ends of a hula hoop into a flower pot or other solid object. Right, before you begin, you want to take 10 treats. I use sausages and put five treats into each hand like that. So then you're working the dog to the left and to the right five times. And that's as much as you need to do for each exercise. Start with one hoop and stand squarely behind it, feet and eyes forward. Reward your dog as soon as they move or look towards the hoop. You should have five treats in each hand and throw from the side the dog is moving towards. Don't help your dog by calling its name unless it gets very distracted. It should be the dog's choice to go through the hoop. Use a marker word like yes before you throw the treat so he knows he's doing the right thing. As your dog gets the idea, they will pick up speed and motivation and you should get a good rhythm going. After five runs in each direction, give your dog a break. You can make it harder for him before you move on to the next exercise by standing further away from the hoop. The next exercise is with two hoops. Stand squarely in between them and as before reward your dog for running back and forth between them by throwing a treat and using your marker word. Again, don't give your dog any help, it should be his decision to offer the behaviour. Repeat the exercise five times in both directions as before and try to get a good rhythm going before you move on to the next part. You can make the exercise harder by moving the hoops further apart. As you can see, Amadeus fully understands that passing through a hoop will result in a reward and offers the behaviour unasked. You can make the exercise even more difficult by stepping back and adding more distance between you and the hoops. Good job. The next exercise is using three hoops. I've given Amadeus a break and swapped to Bohemia, who you can see is much faster. Stand level with the middle hoop and reward as before. If you're good at throwing, you can make it harder by increasing the distance between the hoops and stepping further back. In hoopers, the tunnels are shorter and taller than in agility, and there is also a fabric covered chute. I don't have any of these at home, so I'm going to use an agility tunnel. Whatever you use, make sure it's well weighted down. I can't afford sandbags, so concrete blocks and rope do the job of keeping the tunnel still. As before, reward your dog for passing through the tunnel in each direction. You should be stood in the centre of the tunnel, as I don't want to stand with my bottom block in the camera, I'm stood behind it. Obviously, Bohemia has done this exercise lots of times before, and I can work at that distance, but you will need to be much closer in the beginning. The next object to teach your dog is the tango mat. I don't own a proper one, so I've improvised with some artificial grass and four cones. As before, stand in the centre of the object and wait for the dog to move forward before you throw a treat. You can throw a treat out to the end of the mat when you first start to get the dog to move away from you if necessary. Repeat five times in each direction, then to start to move back away from the mat to increase distance. Even 
To teach the barrel, your dog first needs to understand how to circle around an object. If you haven't already taught that, start with a cone and lower your dog around it by placing a treat under her nose. Once the dog gets the idea, keep your hand still and let her offer the behaviour on her own. Don't forget to work your dog both ways. With the barrel, stand as close to it as possible and wait for your dog to move around behind it. Then start to move backwards to increase distance. Always throw the treat as you don't want your dog to come looking for the treat from you as you want them to learn to be independent and work at a distance. Add in a second barrel and practice sending straight and diagonally. This diagonal movement is your front cross and can be used for changing direction. Start to combine the skills your dog has learned by adding two hoops in front of the barrel. To start with I wasn't using command for the barrel but now she understands what she's doing I'm using round, although you can use whatever word you feel comfortable with. Start in the centre of the obstacles, in this case left level with the second hoop, and move back to increase distance. If you go too far, then retrace your steps and make it simpler for your dog. Don't allow them to fail more than twice. Add more barrels, in this case three, to make an L-shaped course with a hoop at each end. Keep the barrels close together to start with to make it easier for your dog. Now's a good time to add in a sit-start. Remember to go back and reward your dog for staying. The barrels have now been moved further apart to make it more difficult as well. Let's go back and work on some more hoop skills. This time I'm working on teaching Bohemia to go left and right. Stand central to the middle hoop and as before wait for the dog to move forward. Use your marker word as she passes through the second central hoop and then throw the treat to land to the side of the third hoop so she makes the turn. Again wait for the dog to decide to do it and stay quiet. You can make it harder by moving back and increasing the distance. Don't add in the word left or right until you are sure the dog fully understands the movement she is making. If the dog makes a mistake because she was distracted by a rattling sausage packet like Bohemia, then simply reposition her and wait for her to do it right. You can increase the difficulty of the exercise by moving the hoops further apart. Next we have an exercise working with five hoops set in a circle. Bohemia is an expert at this. She's also perfected the art of doing multiple circles. This is quite hard for the dogs to learn and is also an exercise that teaches a rear cross, which is basically when the dog crosses in front of you rather than you in front of it. We'll put that into action later in a course sequence, but for now let's look at how to teach this. Amadeus doesn't know how to do this, so I'm going to work with him. Start by standing in the middle of the circle with the dog running around you, or walking if they're slow like Amadeus. Stay level with their shoulder, and if you have done enough work on getting them to move independently down a line of hoops, they should understand the concept of taking the hoop in front of them. Walk slowly backwards, increasing your distance from the dog until he can circle with you on the outside. As he comes towards you, throw the treat through the next hoop so he learns to keep going. Next time, throw the treat so it lands after the second hoop and use the right command which he already knows. Now I'm aiming for the third hoop, which is easier said than done. Obviously this wasn't the same day, but this time I've managed to get to the third hoop and to get him to keep going. While I work out how to phase out throwing the sausage, let's swap over to Disney. She has also been hard work to teach this, as she has a tendency to spin before moving forward. I've managed to get her to stop spinning by using the same method of throwing sausages out to get the hoops further out on the right hand side, and also using lots of praise when she gets it right. I've also found it helps to use a very exaggerated arm position. I pull her towards me with my left hand and then send her away with the right. And if 
eventually we get there and she gets it right. Like most dogs, she has a preference for which direction she likes to work in and picks up going round to the right, no problem at all. Let's try a simple sequence with five hoops and two barrels. This is a chance to work on your distance handling skills. Notice the lack of commands that I use. Remember to work it in both directions and to add distance. In competition we often have to work behind a line. It's worth videoing yourself doing that as you'll see how often you step over the line like I did. You can push yourself further by sitting on a chair or even on the floor. Let's try a course with all the equipment we have learned. My course drawing skills need some work and I need some more equipment. Bohemia is first to try it out. I'm staying fairly close to her as she has a tendency to fall in off the course and hasn't the distant skills of Disney. In competition you will often get a bonus box to stand in and have to get your dog to negotiate part of the course with you staying in it. I was in danger of falling over here but we got it. The competition run was filmed after we'd had just three lessons. You can see Disney and I are coping with using a box for me to stand in much better after more practice. I've marked the area using a long line. This is supposed to be an S-shaped course. Bohemia is first to try it and I stay with her and do a front cross to get the far objects. This time I stayed still and sent her in front of me, but she cut back in before the last hoop. Disney also had problems with doing this as she was back to spinning a circle when I asked her to cross in front of me. I dealt with both problems by back chaining the course. This is breaking it down into smaller sections and starting from the end of the course and adding more objects until finally she was able to do the whole thing. With more equipment, this course would look more like the figure of eight that I intended it to be. I've drawn two hooper sized tunnels, but of course I'm using one large three metre agility one. I start by back chaining it with Amadeus and staying close as he doesn't work with much distance yet. He doesn't like it when I change sides in the middle of a course, so luckily there are a lot less changes of sides in hoopers than there is in agility. Then on to Disney, who manages to do the whole course with me hardly moving my feet. We spent last summer in the UK and were competing after just three lessons. Some of the courses we ran can be viewed in this link, but watch the end of this video first, please. Thank you for watching our video. We hope you enjoyed what you saw. Please click on the subscribe button if you did for more great content from Disney and the Snow Dogs. And don't forget to give us a like and a comment. Thank you.